everybody. Welcome to One More Round with Josh Norris. I'm excited to be here with Megan today. Uh, so I have Megan Alfonso. And service to others is the rent you pay your room here on Earth. Uh, Megan is a fifth generation Arizonan. After graduating from Desert Mountain High School, she moved down to Tucson to go to the University of Arizona. Megan graduated in 2007 with a Bachelor of Science degree in Family Studies and Human Development. Since graduating college, Megan assisted with numerous charities, both for business purposes as well as pleasure. Her last job before starting her own nonprofit at the Phoenix Children's Hospital Foundation for two years as both a special events coordinator assistant and a communications specialist, she helped raise almost $3 million in a variety of different events. The Pierce Family Foundation was established in 2014 with the goal of being the bridge between the hospital and the home. And the foundation raises money for families at the home who have a child suffering from a chronic or life-threatening illness. Since inception, PFF has raised almost $850,000 and has helped thousands of families with both bills as well as with a variety of needs at the home. Getting the entrepreneurial itch about four years ago, Megan created an all-inclusive travel concierge business called Girl About Town. Thinking it would be an ongoing list to sell to incoming travelers has quickly transformed into a full-fledged business now located in Louisiana and Denver. Megan has a team of 25, two vans, a plethora of contacts of local vendors, and I for creating an epic weekend for incoming groups, specifically bachelorette parties. Over 400 groups filtered through GAT last year, and they already have 200 uh, past 250 booked for the year current. Megan's wife, a mom to six-month-old Pierce, a bonus mom to two amazing stepdaughters. She's excited to build an enterprise for family. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks Megan. for having me, Josh. Yeah, you have a very impressive <laughs> resume. Oh, gosh. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we've known each other for quite some time now. Yes. And uh, Girl About Town, is I've watched it like continue to thrive and to flourish. But, I mean, you're doing so much. Uh, how do you, how do you kind of keep the hats uh, oh my gosh. correct? Well, it's definitely been hard, especially now becoming a mom. It's like a whole nother ball game, but um, I'm really thankful for my staff and my team. Like, I think right now we have a really good core group of people that can help me grow it to what it's capable of. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So uh, let's start with the Pierce Family Foundation. That's okay. super cool. Um, <laughs> did you get the idea while you were working at Phoenix uh, Children's Hospital? Or? Yeah, a little bit. When I was there, and I loved it. I mean, the mission there is amazing. And what they do for the children in the Valley is um, crazy. And it's just, you know, it, it's amazing to see everything that they can do for the kids that need that type of service. But um, I thought I'd be there forever. Like, I'm like, I'll raise millions of dollars for this organization. But when I was there, there wasn't a lot of opportunity for growth. And mm -hmm. so I actually just quit and I like had no plans. And I was just like, oh no, I just moved into an apartment. Like, how am I gonna make rent? And so my, he wasn't my husband at the time, but he was my boyfriend was like, you should just start your own business. And so I'm like, or your own nonprofit. <laughs> and I'm like, what? I don't even know where to begin. And so I hired a life coach and he kind of helped me like figure out the necessary steps to start the nonprofit. And the reason I really wanted to is um, my great grandfather and my dad's side of the family mm -hmm. has been in the Valley, like you mentioned before, you know, the state was even a state. That's how I'm a fifth generation. Wow. And they were the first Coors beer distributors out here. Okay. And so I kind of watched him, well I did, I watched him be an entrepreneur and a boss, you know, my whole life. And I'm like, well, I'm gonna try it out too. <laughs> It's great. So um, with Pierce Family Foundation, uh, I, I was at a dog show you guys did yes. about a month ago. Uh -huh. It was so much fun. <laughs> what all things do you do to help you know, raise money and, mm -hmm. and how, how do those go to benefit the children? So throughout the year, as you know, we started doing um, the PFF dog show. So mm -hmm. under the Pierce Family Foundation, we, like you mentioned, pay for bills for families who have a child with a chronic illness. <laughs> so we cover like their rent or mortgages, you know, car payments, anything that um, the hospital doesn't really handle. We, mm -hmm. you know, we don't do medical bills, but we'll make sure when they leave the hospital, they have a home to go to, as well as, you know, their electricity is still on. So <laughs> we put on a variety of events throughout the year. We're a part of a tax credit give back campaign that Arizona has out here. Mm -hmm. um, you can donate through Amazon Smile. You know, whenever you shop on Amazon, a portion can come back to the foundation. Um, so we just try and think of different and unique events to host throughout the year that we can give back to the community. 
It's amazing. So what, what have you been able to, to do then, like, for the kids and stuff? What are some cool stories? Oh, my gosh. Well, we've been able, like, <coughs> since that event you came on or <laughs> helped with, um, we are able to give service dogs to children. Mm -hmm. And service dogs, I had no idea, would benefit kids when I first started the nonprofit. But they allow children who have epilepsy, they can actually sense when a child is about to have a seizure. They'll alert their parents or do some kind of movement to make sure that they can, you know, get the child the medicine they need so they don't have to rush to a hospital. And so that's been great. And then we've even given a car to a mom who's needed a vehicle to take her children to the hospital. So we really try and touch touch on those home needs that, mm -hmm. so they can have a safe place to get better. It's awesome. <laughs> now, how does somebody go about uh, applying for your services? So on our website, there's... um. <laughs> Under um, programs, you can don't, you can if a family who is a child between a day old to 17 can send in a grant or a request for a grant, and so then we pretty much just look at their request, um, you know what the most need is, and then we as um, on the board will decide like how much we can grant them. We try and grant. We were able to increase every quarter about. 15,000 and mm -hmm. so um, we try and disperse that as much as possible and then um, if you want to be involved you can go on our Instagram or on our website and there's a volunteer option. Cool. Mm -hmm. And what, what uh, kind of events do you have coming up? Well let's see I'm trying to do a roller skating party. Okay. <laughs> I really want to rent a roller rink out here and um, do and roller skating seems to be the new thing and do like a 70s kind of disco roller skating but um, that's hopefully in the works and then we do a car rally every year and then we have our sporting clay tournament as well which is going to be our ninth year holding it and you go out to Ben Avery and shoot clay pigeons and it raises almost or over fifty thousand dollars so oh, sounds so much fun <laughs> I gotta do that one yes you gotta come out and show us your shooting skills <laughs> yeah they're not great I think I've shot clay pigeons five times in my life okay but... well we sell mulligans so <laughs> oh perfect I'll need plenty of them but okay, that's how good. we raise money right exactly it's all for the kids <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that sounds like, you know, you've got your hands full there. Right. Uh, but you started Girl About Town. I mean, how did that all come about? Oh, my gosh. Well, I have actually some friends that would make fun of me and be like, Megan, you're you're like the girl about town. You always know what's going on or, like, what's happening. And I would get asked a lot from, like, friends that don't live here anymore, you know, like, hey, where's a good place to stay? Or mm -hmm. my family's coming to town, like, what restaurant should I go to? Or um, I don't know. I get asked questions all the time, probably because they know I'm fifth generation. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I'll just put this as a list, like, and sell it on, you know, a site and <clears> maybe <throat> make it like a blog, you know, and just this will be some side income. And then we started um, saying that we could start doing local parties. And so we did like a graduation and a baby shower. And then that was more, that was fun because it was actually seeing the whole event happen. Mm -hmm. And then a girl reached out from Seattle and asked if we'd set up her Airbnb and put a margarita bar in there. And if she could send us some decorations, like, would we put it in the house? And I'm like, oh, my God, why don't we do this for more people? And so we started promoting it and um, started <coughs> hashtagging certain words. And a bachelorette just started finding us. And now, like you mentioned, we had 420 groups last year. And this year, we're doing 20 events a weekend. Wow. I know. Is it just chaos right now? I mean, it is. Yeah. Like, we thankfully have a lot of room at our warehouse where... <laughs> Girls, we we have girls that come in and help us blow up everything and set everything up before mm -hmm. they actually show up. The you know the groups and everything has just grown like so much. Like we used to let everyone just mail us decorations, you know, and then we mm -hmm. go in and set put everything in. They still do, but now we actually have better stuff that they can rent from us mm -hmm. with neon signs and you know sparkly walls and so that has been life game changing. Awesome. So what all do you do then for <laughs> bachelor best reds? Because it yeah. seems like you do a little everything. Yeah. So we, we can itinerary mm. plan for them, which they love because then we'll make all the <laughs> reservations for them. We um, fill their fridge. That's a huge sell for people because you get to wherever you're going and the last thing you want to do is go find a grocery store. So we'll actually grocery shop for them. We'll buy their alcohol, snacks, food for the whole weekend, and then we deliver it to them. We decorate, of course, for them. They can rent pool floats from us. That's another huge sell. Mm -hmm. um, what else? We have cornhole rental. We can um, make an, um, like a whole theme of like if they come to us and they're like, we have no idea what direction we want to go for the weekend. And so we can create a theme for them for the whole party. 
Um, really anything. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much anything. That's awesome. I know we, we've had a lot of uh, your bachelorette parties end up getting IVs. Right. Uh, that maybe went a little too hard on Friday or Saturday. And uh huh. You get back I, in their feet. Yes, they love you. We um, <laughs> leave a card with every group that says, like, book with, re if you're not feeling too good, you know, mm -hmm. book with Regenerate IV. And I think most of them all, like, are very thankful we give them that yeah. because, yeah, we see the amount of alcohol they're buying. <laughs> Yeah. We're like, this will be a great client for you. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's like, oh, I'll, I won't need it. Yeah. And then they get here. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. 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 Scottsdale's become like a mini Vegas, and I think they don't realize <clears throat> how fast that can turn on them. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually insane. So we did like a little staycation last year in Scottsdale. I think we stayed at the W. Uh -huh. And so we just, you know, went around to some of the different local restaurants and hung out during the day. Right. And it was like bachelorette party over here over there you know they got the party bike they got you know we went into this uh rusty spur saloon oh, or something yeah. like that it was uh -huh. like 10 bats rep parties right there it's crazy yeah. i know i mean i know so many like um there's so many new like companies that have popped up just be to cater to the bachelorette parties mm -hmm. it's wild and i mean i didn't realize until i started doing it full time that Scottsdale has become the second most popular location in the country for bachelorettes. Nashville's one, Scottsdale's two, which is wild. You know? Yeah. I mean, so us, our <laughs> business is very well situated. And I love Nashville too, so we'll have to move yeah. out to Nashville at some point. Yes, yeah. I agree. <laughs> That's awesome. So what's, uh, what's on the horizon then for Girl About Town? So speaking of Nashville and like how you mentioned New Orleans and Denver, we are going to start franchising the business. I've been trying with the current cities, it's worked of like having brand ambassadors in the mm -hmm. other locations. We had other ones, but due to it takes about a year for our business to get really kind of off the ground and the like um, to get some traction, you know, people knowing that we're there. So um, we decided that we're going to start franchising to other business or cities and mm -hmm give the opportunity for, you know, if it's a, you know, a, a wife or, you know, maybe it's a group of girls or whomever want to start their own business and just need some support, they can create their own business with a brand that's already established. And so. It's awesome. And then do you like spend some time training them on yeah. how to, you know, get customers and all that good stuff? Yeah. So they, <laughs> I think we're going to come up with a whole process, but I think it's going to be like, you got to come to Arizona, you know, for maybe a week or two work in the office with us. We'll train you on how to sell, you know, we're going to train you how to invoice, how to do everything setups. And you're going to have to build your packages the way we've done them mm -hmm. really like a whole guide as to like how to make it happen. And then I think we're going to have to go out and check on them, you yeah. know, periodically. And it's, it's kind of crazy to think of like where it could go. You know, mm -hmm. I have a girl <laughs> that's even an intern at, from ASU and, um, she's from Europe, from London. And I'm like, Gosh, you could potentially be our first like overseas ambassador. I mean, how cool would that be? I know, and she's like, "Oh my gosh, there's nothing like this in Europe," you know. And so, I don't know. We'll see. It's awesome, sky's the limit. <laughs> I know. It so, is. Uh, let's talk about being an entrepreneur mm -hmm. and um, the challenges that come, the ups, the downs, the craziness. Right. You know, what are some things that you've learned over the last several years of being your own? Uh, business owner and mm -hmm. what advice would you give to uh, somebody starting out? Um, nobody is going to love your business as much <laughs> as you do. Like I, um, I think that's sometimes the hardest part, you know, like I'm the one that obviously like has all these huge goals and dreams for it. And, um, I'm really the only one who can like make that continue to happen. Um, I hope that doesn't come off like, <laughs> No, I totally know what you mean. Okay. Yep. Um, and then I think it's just like, don't let people like bring you down or like, you know, it sounds like so cliche, but I, I've, when I first started this business, I had so many financial advisors or people just say like, this is silly. There's no way you're going to make any money or any profit from it. And I've been able to like prove them wrong. Even with the nonprofit, I had a lot of people say like, you're not going to, this won't go anywhere. Nonprofits fail all the time, you know, like. How are you going to, you know, there's millions in the valley or whatever. And it's just like, you got to trust your gut and like trust that you can do it if you really believe in it. Mm -hmm. And then you got to find a good group of people who will, you know, stick by you and not let, there's been hard times like coming back off maternity leave. I had a few like really personal, like, go, like blows, you know, of things I found out and things I had to take care of. And it was really like 
frustrating, you know, mm -hmm. that I had to like some employee stuff and it's just like, okay, I have to just keep moving and this was happens. This is growing pains, you know, mm -hmm. but we're on a good track now. But yeah. And when you like deal with that, like with employees that maybe don't see the business the same way mm -hmm. or end up leaving. I mean, mm -hmm. I know that can be challenging. I've yeah. had it happen before. I mean, right. how do you, how do you deal with that the best way without it spoiling your, your team that's actually I know. producing? I know. It's, I mean, I think I constantly am just trying to show the girls that I appreciate them and that I understand what we're doing. It's a lot. And I ask a lot of them, but I also am trying to show that like, I wouldn't <clears throat> ask anything of them that I haven't done or would do, you know, mm -hmm. like, <clears throat> Yeah, I'm the boss, but like last weekend we had a setup in Buckeye, which is, you know, 40 minutes from yep. Scottsdale. I went and did it with a, one of my girls, you know, like I went one time when we had a client mishap and brought her a bottle of tequila, you know, like I am trying to sh like, I, I wouldn't ever ask anybody to do something that I wouldn't do or like haven't done. So I'm in there with them. Uh, no, and that's huge. I mean, mm -hmm. as a leader being able to show them and to work with them directly on the ground floor right? rather than just, you know, from this beacon uh, yeah. atop and, and like, like, just do this and that. Yeah. It uh, doesn't go over terribly well. I agree. Yeah. yeah. And I'll, every time I see the board, you know, cause we write all the clients names and like the times and everything that they're getting. I'm like, okay, if you guys need me, like, let me know, you know, mm -hmm. I'm like, put me on a job if you need me to. And like, they mostly do not unless it's like a last minute thing or like, something a random that happens that I got to like jump in, but I at least let them know, like I'm here. Like I, mm -hmm. I'll do it if you need me to go fill a fridge or like go drop off pool floats or do a setup. Like I'm here for mm -hmm. you guys. So I think that's the, a good way to show them that I'm there for them. And then I'm really, really try and promote <clears throat> within, as you probably know, we have a lot of girls we call like side hustlers that mm -hmm. just help us implement all the, the jobs that we have every week. So <clears throat> those girls we watch and we're like, Oh, this one's doing really great. Like, I think she could handle more responsibility or, mm. you know, she's expressed interest in the company. So I hire from those, that group versus just outside mm. of the company. Uh, it was just super smart. I remember, so I had Laura uh, Newbro, which is a friend of mine, but she owns an HR company. Mm -hmm. And she was talking about previous uh, at her, her other company that they took from like, like four employees to 120 by the time she was done mm -hmm. and all the processes and stuff. But she talked about, uh, literally creating a position that people could grow into mm -hmm. because people had that same, like, oh, I'm not going anywhere. Almost like you did right. with uh, Phoenix Children's Hospital. Like, mm -hmm. where is this going? Yeah. But by providing that one thing, and it wasn't even more money. Honestly, mm -hmm. it was like a, a title, like a new different title that they mm -hmm. could earn. Eventually, it would come with a little more money. Their retention went to almost 100%. Wow. And it, whereas it was like 65 or 70, if mm -hmm. I remember correctly. Oh my gosh. So, well, that's good to know. Yeah. So <laughs> We're doing that. We're doing it right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Promote within, create, you know, those those positions. Because I've met a handful of the girls that work for you, and mm -hmm. they're, they're all great. I mean, everybody's yeah. just, um, they always have a smile on their face. Mm -hmm. They're always, you know, like working hard. Like when I've come down to the uh -huh. foundation and stuff, like they, they're, they're at their little <laughs> TMZ type desk. And yeah. They're just, <laughs> Yeah, I know. I definitely think it's a fun environment too that we have. I mean, they're talking all day about balloons and, you know, colors and neon signs and alcohol, you know, I mean, it's yeah. just fun stuff. So it's a fun environment for everybody too. It's awesome. So, uh, any more businesses you plan on starting <laughs> right now? Oh my God. It's funny. I actually, I think it was probably during COVID, like <laughs> when everybody thought, you know, could add on more business. I was trying to start a, um, a house plant company and I actually called it Mrs. House plant. Uh -huh. And I was going to, cause I have all these, like I used to have a live wall, live wall in my house. And so, um, with all these plants and the branches were hanging yeah. down, it was crazy. And so I'm like to my husband, I'm like, I'm going to start replanting the ones I trim and selling it. And I'm like, I tried all these pots and it didn't work out. I don't, I think I sold one and I think it was to Alex who works for me. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, no, Megan, what am I thinking? No, I got to just stick Two is hard enough yep. and being a mom and a wife and everything. So <laughs> it, it's funny you say that, like staying in my lane, it was just like about four years ago. Uh -huh. I, I just, I had this mantra, stay in your lane, Josh, because I have like shiny object syndrome Yeah. and this is before we generate. This is when I had a couple of my other companies still, but we started a wood shop company, keepsake wood shop, which is why 
I have this table with my logo that yeah. glows in the dark and it, you know, it's wonderful. <laughs> but it's literally the only thing I ended up getting out of that other than spending a, a lot of money on equipment. Uh, and like we were doing like tooth fairy boxes and coasters and uh -huh. all kinds of cool wine holders. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. But like it never... And my partner at the time, like he was great. He was the one actually doing the work. Mm -hmm. um, I was just, you know, the investor and in, in, in whatnot. But I'm like, yeah, if I would have thought this through, <laughs> I probably was not the right investor for this particular company. But I know. You know. We got to try it out, right? Yeah, that's right. I know. Well, your $30, wife. $30,000 table I know. Right I do. I like it, though. <laughs> well, and we love working with your wife, too. Yeah. And, like, all of her stuff that she does. So. Yeah, and she's great at it. Now yeah. she's only working with companies like yourself, like, uh -huh. that are doing more, you know, multiple people and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Because it's that personalization that you guys add mm -hmm. that makes the big difference, Oh, right? for sure. That's what I tell my girls. Because, like, our tagline is, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Mm -hmm. And, like, um, so I'm always, like, we got to remind them they're finding us and want and using us and they need to be treated like VIPs. Like, no matter who they are because they know Girl About Town. You yep. know, they're going to get into that secret restaurant or, you know, they don't need to go all the chains and stuff. Like, let's show them around town yeah. the local way. So I'm going to completely deviate for a minute because this is fun. I don't meet... I don't think I know anybody that's a fifth generation Arizonan. I'm uh, technically, so my dad was born here. Okay. Grandfather moved here. So I guess technically I'm just a second, right? Okay. So I'm a second generation. But as a first generation, I need, like, what's the best Mexican restaurant that you've been going to forever? Oh, my God. Okay. Ah, you are throwing me off because I used to go to different ones with my parents. They love Los Olivos. The okay. one in Old Town. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. I think um, the owners went... The owner and their children went to school with my father at PCDS. Mm -hmm. And so, love Los Olivos. Um, I love Caroline's. Oh, Caroline's, yeah. That's a good one. Super good. Um, I really like <laughs> Julio G's. Julio? Okay. Oh, Julio G's. <laughs> yes. I've, I've never been. Oh, my God. Cactus and Tatum. Oh, they have the best margaritas. Okay. Yeah. What else? Okay. I think that's my three. So, that's, okay. So, that's Mexican. Okay. Now, uh, what, what are some of the best restaurants, just in general, that you like being um, there? Okay, I love City Hall. <laughs> City okay. Hall is like my go-to steakhouse. I love um, the service, and their butter cake is to die for. I'm going to have the butter cake there. But... Okay, you got to go there. Um, God, what other restaurants? Now I should have thought of this stuff before. I Sorry, it was a total curveball. But... Um, I love El Charo. <laughs> I think that's a really good one. El Charo, yeah. That's a good one. My sister actually got married there, and it was a really, it was beautiful. That's off Lincoln, you know, and like mm -hmm. Tatum. Um, what else? Oh, my husband and I love Rascones. That's also off Shea okay. and Tatum. It's this little, it looks like a hole in the wall, but it has also the best service. <laughs> it's a that's... tiny little spot. What kind of food? Um, gosh, I would say American. They have, you know, like, they have interesting stuff like duck, like roasted chicken. Mm -hmm. um, very delicious, though. That one's good. Are there any pizza places out here that you're like, I gotta... Oh, oh yes. I love um, El Bosco. Bosco another spot. A... I'm all in my bubble. Um, another spot off um, Scottsdale and mm. Shea. Like, it's over by Handlebar <laughs> J's. It's right next okay. door to there. That's a really good little spot. And then... Um, Oh my gosh, what's the place in downtown Phoenix that everyone's obsessed with? Oh, um, Blanco? Yeah, Wait. Pizzeria Bianco. Pizzeria Bianco, mm -hmm. yeah. The girl, um, the man who owns it, her, his wife went to high school with me, and so it's oh, really cool. delicious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Sorry, so I had to like deviate there for a second. No, it's okay. I like, I'm like, now I feel like it. <laughs> well, because Arizona, it's a fascinating place. I mean, yeah. granted, we've, you said like, Technically, even before we were a state, you know, mm -hmm. your family was here. Right. Because it's only been, what, 110 years? Yeah. I think, what, it was founded, I think, in 19, was it 1912? <laughs> that think. sounds right. Yeah. Because I remember when they did the, like, ceremony. So, yeah, I mean, we're not, we're, I think, what, one of the youngest states, I think, yeah. around. And so, yeah, my, um, my dad has a book, or a past cousin wrote a book, and I need to read it. And it's all about them, like, coming across, like the desert and mm -hmm. like establishing themselves. And so it's, it's wild. Yeah, it, it is wild. And it's kind of neat how it's built here because everything's on a grid system, mm -hmm. which you don't really see. But what I, w I was told was actually we were based on uh, Utah and Salt Lake City. Mm -hmm. uh, the Mormons had kind of built everything in a grid. So right. it's easier to get to. So 
out here, that's why everything was structured this way. Yes. Because you go to like San Diego or a place like that, it's like everything's zigzagging yeah. and all this. And like, uh -huh. how do you get from place to place? Whereas <laughs> here, it's like, oh, it's on 43rd Avenue and Cactus, or yes. it's on Tatum and Shea. And like, oh, I know how to get there. Just go on a straight, straight line <laughs> for seven miles, take a left, three more miles, and that's there I am. That's interesting. Yes. And you know mm. what? My um, dad's side of the family was Mormon originally. And okay. so, which was. It was kind of intense. Well, not intense, but it was like my great grandfather, how I mentioned, was the first Coors Beer distributor. Mm -hmm. So when he decided to do that, you know, my grandma, my great grandma was like, well, we're Mormon and we don't drink. And like, how could you bring this on as a family business? And yeah. then he thought and knew it would be a good, you know, um, business yeah. for them to like continue. So <laughs> well, it's funny. So my wife's uncle, who's one of my big mentors, he's 80, I think he's 86 now, but I've known him for almost. Well, 16 years we uh -huh. were married. And uh, one of the things I remember, 4th of July, we're, we used to build floats for this 4th of July thing. So he and I would travel into town. And I'd always pick his brain on things. But he, he said to me, and I don't remember the context of why. He's like, but he says, I don't go to the doctor. He says, I don't gamble. And I don't eat fast food. Mm -hmm. But I own casinos. I own fast food joints. And I own urgent cares. Wow. Because that's what people need. Uh -huh. I'm like, huh. Makes sense. That so like going back to mm -hmm. doesn't drink, doesn't matter. Yeah. Somebody does. Somebody, yeah. And it will last through a recession, you know, and <laughs> pandemic, like it's going to be fine. Yeah. Recession proof businesses are, I think, so important. I and, know. And looking at like your business and saying, how, how can I survive another recession if it happens? I know. If and when, I should say. That is a good question. I mean, definitely when COVID hit, it like took a huge you know I mean we were mm -hmm. like well wait a minute nobody can travel nobody can be around each other so we um we decided to start doing virtual bachelorettes and mm -hmm. virtual sleepovers actually for kids mm -hmm. and that was a, actually a huge like source of like revenue because these kids would go come onto our zoom link and we had games and like you know um snack recipes they could make with their parents and stuff and oh, like they'd all cool. just get on and like play while they're in their sleeping bags on their computers and I mean it actually like worked out but you do you, you have to get creative and think okay what what happens if this happens again <laughs> yeah, well and, and it's all about being outside of the box because I know what your business looks like today compared to 10 years from now could be completely different I know I it mean, really could <clears throat> I thought this was going to be a long list of just suggestions and now it's like nope <laughs> well and like um IBM started did you know it started as a meat slicer company? No. Yeah. I did not. And this is back in like the late 1800s, right? Uh huh. And then obviously IBM, the international business machine, what we know yeah. today, computers and all that stuff. So it's like just always that evolving. Mm -hmm. And over time, you know, everything works out as long as you keep going, right? I know. And I, yes. I think I think we will. I have a lot of faith and good vibes about GAT, so I'm excited yeah. to see where it grows. <laughs> Me too. I think it's going to continue to thrive. And well, thank you. Congrats on all the success. So, how can people find you online? Um, you can find us on um, Instagram, TikTok, and it's um, Girl About Town. It's underscore Girl underscore About underscore Town, and then you can find us on obviously online at GirlAboutTown.org, mm -hmm. and then you can find me on Instagram on Megs Alfonso seven two five. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for coming on today. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> hey, guys, I know you got a ton out of this. Um, you know, thanks for Megan for coming on. Make sure you comment, you know, like, and hey, subscribe to the channel. Share this with a friend of yours that's a young business owner just like Megan that's growing and uh, give them some great advice. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. <laughs>